On February 1, 2003, seven astronauts said their goodbyes to their colleagues on the International Space Station, ISS, as they climbed into the Columbia Space Shuttle to return back to Earth. But just as they headed for the Kennedy Space Center, the orbiter went up in flames, killing everyone on board. Since then, we haven't had any major accidents in space involving humans. However, following significant damage to a Soyuz spacecraft that recently docked at the ISS, there's a real worry among scientists that we could have a repeat of the Columbia disaster if the astronauts are not rescued quickly. Join us in today's video as we discuss NASA's efforts to rescue these astronauts and what can be done to situations like this in the future. The Consequence of Negligence Despite its unceremonious dismissal in 2011, the Space Shuttle remains one of the most successful programs in the history of human space travel. Since it commenced in 1972, the program has helped to transport over 800 astronauts to the ISS across 135 missions. However, its mission in 2003 carved a lifelong scar on the reputation of the program invented by NASA and the safety of human space travel as a whole. Prior to the tragic disaster on the 1st of February 2003, Columbia had successfully transported seven astronauts to the ISS. They include Commander Rick Husband, Pilot Willie McCool, Mission Specialists Kalpana Chawla, Laurel Clark, Michael Anderson, David Brown, and Israeli guest astronaut Ilan Ramon. Apart from a lightweight foam insulation that got detached from the external tank of the spacecraft as it powered through the winds at 1,500 miles per hour, the journey was smooth. But as you know, in space travel, even the tiniest bit of error can lead to significant accidents. Experts carefully analyzed footage of the foam disappearing from the shuttle's left wing before scattering into tiny pieces. Further analysis revealed that the foam collided with the underside of Columbia's left wing at a speed of over 500 miles per hour. Unfortunately, NASA engineers could not confirm the exact point where the foam impacted Columbia's wing. To make things worse, the spacecraft wasn't equipped with a robot arm, meaning that NASA could not carry out a forensic inspection in space. Perhaps even more shocking, senior officials opted not to request for spy satellite imagery, which could have provided more insights. So, while these seven astronauts were performing experiments in space, engineers at NASA headquarters were deliberating whether it was safe or not for them to travel in a spacecraft that was struck by foam a few weeks earlier. In the end, an engineering analysis by a software model ruled that the impact of the foam on the spacecraft does not pose a threat to the safety of the flight, and with that, the officials on ground gave their approval for the crew to return using the damaged spacecraft. Unaware about the mini-accident that occurred on their way to the ISS and the deliberations that followed, the astronauts climbed back into the Columbia orbiter and started their journey back to Earth. At exactly 8.53 a.m., the Columbia spacecraft drifted past the coast of California at nearly 8,000 meters per second. By this time, hundreds of space enthusiasts gathered around the Western United States, hoping to glimpse a Columbia as it makes its grand return to Earth after a successful 16-day mission. At 8.54 a.m., officials at the Johnson Space Center in Houston received the worrying signal of a loss of temperature readings from the hydraulic lines in Columbia's left wing. A few minutes later, the left main landing gear tire pressure reading was lost, and worst of all, communication between the crew and mission control was disrupted. Within a few fractional seconds, Columbia plunged out of control and eventually broke apart while flying at over 6,000 meters per second. All seven astronauts on board died in an instant. About two and a half minutes later, news of the tragic incident reached the Kennedy Space Center, where news reporters, family members, well wishes, NASA officials, and the ground support team had been waiting to give Columbia a boisterous welcome. This singular incident directly led to the end of the Space Shuttle program, and since then, experts have worked tirelessly hard to ensure that we don't have a repeat of that horrifying incident again. And so far, we've enjoyed an extended accident-free period in the last two decades. However, experts have been put on high alert after it was confirmed that the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, 
which transported astronauts to the ISS, suffered a severe coolant leak. NASA considers using SpaceX. Dragon to rescue, crew of damaged Soyuz. As expected, NASA and other relevant space agencies have sprung into action in a bid to avoid a disastrous accident like the one we witnessed in February 2003. At the moment, a couple of options are on the table. The first one would be to send another Soyuz rocket to retrieve the astronauts. Russian officials say this backup flight should arrive at the ISS between two to three weeks before the agreed changeover date. But if it doesn't, NASA is prepared to deploy the Dragon rocket belonging to SpaceX for the rescue mission. We've asked SpaceX a few questions on their capability to return additional crew members on Dragon if necessary, but that's not our prime focus at this time. Sandra Jones, a spokesperson for NASA, said in a statement to Reuters. While the statement shows the readiness of NASA to swing into action, it doesn't exactly clarify the role that SpaceX will play in the mission. One option would be for the company to send out a backup Dragon spacecraft to evacuate the astronauts or perhaps add more seats to the existing Dragon rocket docked at the ISS. This said, rocket known as Endeavour is normally supposed to accommodate five passengers. If the Endeavour was commissioned for the return mission, the astronauts would have to find new spacesuits because all crew members who board the Dragon rocket are expected to be kitted in a custom-made SpaceX spacesuit. Also, determining the cause of the leak is another factor that could possibly affect how the astronauts will be transported back to Earth. One source claims that the leak was caused by the impact of a meteoroid strike on the Soyuz capsule. This argument was seemingly validated by a recent meteor shower. If that's the case, it means that another Soyuz rocket can be sent to retrieve the astronauts. However, NASA's ISS program manager, Joel Montalbano, said that would have been impossible considering the position of the leak. Nonetheless, experts believe that a meteoroid could have impacted the rocket from another direction. This raises serious concerns about the orbital environment that spacecraft travel to get to the ISS. And perhaps it calls for greater scrutiny of some of the spacecraft's components. For instance, engineers involved in the design of the Soyuz rocket and other spacecraft may have to consider installing shields on components like the coolant line and other parts that are not currently protected. But even if this approach is adopted, Michael Suffredini, a renowned space expert who served as NASA's International Space Station program manager from 2005 to 2015, believes it wouldn't solve all our worries about meteorites. We are not shielded against everything throughout the space station, he said. We can't shield against everything. Beyond meteorites, experts also suggest that a hardware malfunction could be responsible for the leak. In this case, the integrity of other Soyuz vehicles, meaning that the Dragon rocket would be the only viable means of evacuating the astronauts. And Michael Suffredini confirmed that this is one of the options that NASA is looking at. I can assure you that's something they're looking at, to see what's back there and whether there's a concern for it, he said. The thing about the Russians is they're really good at not talking about what they're doing, but they're very thorough. But even as we worry about the condition of the damaged Soyuz rocket, it is also imperative to consider the well-being of the International Space Station itself. Currently, this advanced space hub is equipped with eight power channels, which are supplied by one solar array wing installed in the station's truss backbone. Most of the existing solar panels were installed during the early days of the station between 2000 and 2009. Over time, the efficiency of these panels have deteriorated. According to reports, NASA is currently planning to replace six of the eight solar panels installed on the ISS at an estimated cost of $103 million. And by the time the upgrade is completed, the ISS will be able to generate up to 215 kilowatts of electricity, representing a 30% increase in the station's current power generation capacity. With this staggering amount of power, the ISS might just be about to run for another decade and perhaps even accommodate more commercial modules if need be.